Hello everyone. The topic for today's discussion is renal tubular acidosis. When you will, the first question arises in mind that when will <coughs> a suspicion of renal tubular acidosis occur? So it occurs in chronic kidney diseases when the GFR is declined for more than equal to three months. The most common acid-based defect in CKD is chronic metabolic acidosis. Right? Initially. There is normal NAN gap metabolic acidosis with positive urine NAN gap. If the urine NAN gap is negative, you suspect GIT disorders, right? Now, the expected urine pH. This is a very important concept. Now, when there is acidosis, you expect the urine, you expect the kidney to secrete acid and remove acid from the body and urine pH is expected to be acidic but if pH is alkaline there is an that means there is an acidification defect and we suspect renal tubular acidosis the four types of renal tubular acidosis so for understanding that we need to have an idea about the acidification physiology so there are two main sites which uh, we have to understand the first is the PCT now the PCT is responsible for the bicarbonate absorption and next important site is the DCT the DCT and um, collecting duct some part they are responsible for the H plus ion secretion this is the basic now let us first understand about DCT now DCT this DCT is the most important component for acidification maximum amount of acidification is done by DCT an important thing is the DCT cells use citrate as a substrate this is important we will see uh, why so now the H plus secretion by H plus K plus ATPase here is defective right so and it is also site for paracellular calcium and magnesium reabsorption what happens is the H plus and K plus secretion when they are secreted into the lumen they create a positive gradient which pushes the calcium and magnesium through the paracellular pathway so this is what happens in DCT so if there is a defect here we will have type 1 RTA or which is also called as distal RTA right because the defect is distally so it is also called as distal RTA now what will happen to urine pH the urine pH will be more than 5.5 obviously because H plus is not secreted right acidification defects H plus is not secreted the urine pH will be more than 5.5 this is most common inherited and most severe defect this is most common inherited I'm not saying most common clinical this is most common inherited and most severe defect now classically the child presents with ricket or rickets or short stature why again because defective calcium absorption so it would be a male child with rickets or short stature there would be hypercalciuria due to defective paracellular pathway and there will be formation of renal stones this is very important why there will be formation of renal stones I said uh, now citrate normally what happens citrate combines with calcium and calcium is excreted so excess of calcium is excreted so there is no nephrocalcinosis there is no formation of renal stones but in this case the DCT cells are unable to acidify and they also use citrate as a substrate this results in hypocitratemia this hypocitratemia combined with hypercalciuria this results in formation of renal stones right and this has the worst prognosis which is obviously expected because most severe acidification defect now what will happen to plasma bicarbonate here it is important plasma bicarbonate is less than 15 because the defect is severe so plasma bicarbonate will be less than 15 now one important concept is with potassium the potassium is low and it normalizes with alkalization why it is so now see if the body has excess of bicarbonate in it uh, sorry if the body had has excess of H plus in it which is unable to be secreted and you give bicarbonate the metabolic acidosis corrects right once the metabolic acidosis corrects the potassium will be normalized and why the potassium will be low if the body cannot excrete hydrogen ion in turn body will excrete potassium ion as a result this will cause hypokalemia so your type 1 Dist, uh, or distal renal tubular acidosis that is also called as hypokalemic renal tubular acidosis right so these are the important points regarding the renal tubular acidosis specifically type 1 now let us understand type 2 or proximal renal tubular acidosis 
तो proximal renal tubular acidosis uh, uh, now this is the cell in the pct as you can see uh, h2 plus co2 will combine to form bicarbonate uh, h2co3 which will dissociate into bicarbonate and the h plus will be secreted right now in lumen there is another bicarbonate ion which combines with h plus to form h2co3 and again dissociates into h2 and co2 so the important thing is for every bicarbonate which combines with hydrogen ion there is another bicarbonate which is secreted into the blood right this is important it is not the same bicarbonate which is which combines with hydrogen which is secreted but this this is a question uh, the same bicarbonate which is uh, which combines with hydrogen is secreted into the blood the statement is false it is not the same bicarbonate but for every hydrogen ion secreted one bicarbonate ion will be reabsorbed in the blood which is not the same bicarbonate now this is a minor pathway right the major one being the dct now what about acidosis so here there will be mild acidemia why because it is a minor pathway now dct is functional now dct is functional the urine ph will be less than 5.5 right here is uh, there is one twist in this also now as dct is functional acidosis is mild dct will compensate the urine ph would be less than 5.5 usually but if the serum bicarbonate is more than the tubular bicarbonate absorptive threshold more of the bicarbonate will be excreted in the urine this will result in urine ph being more than 5.5 right so in type 2 or proximal rta you can have urine ph more than 5.5 or less than 5.5 both depending upon this uh, serum bicarbonate tube and serum bicarbonate concentration as you know pct is the main site for absorption of nutrients right there are classically three things one is serum sodium uh, amino acid sodium glucose and sodium phosphate this sodium phosphate is important because this is the site of action of parathormone which causes phosphate urea right so these are the things which are absorbed in the pct now as the bicarbonate reabsorption is defective sometimes what happens is there's also a defect in the reabsorption of these components resulting in fanconi syndrome that is glycosuria phosphate urea and amino acid urea right so these can commonly be present in a clinical scenario question they'll commonly give you the catch uh, a patient presents with glycosuria phosphate urea amino acid urea and urine ph more or less than 5.5 and uh, there's a history of uh, assuming chronic kidney disease or anything which is present and there's acidosis so like that this clinical case scenario will include all these things glucosuria phosphate urea and amino acid urea citrate will be present in urine hence there will be no stones citrate is very important citrate is present in urine and there will be no stones now sometimes what happens if there's a type 2 renal tubular acidosis and renal stones or you can say nephrocalcinosis if it is present then it is called as a dent disease dense disease this is a hereditary disorder but just for namesake, if type 2 is present along with nephrocalcinosis or renal stones, then it is dense disease, right? Now here, important concept about bicarbonate. As we saw in type 1, it was less than 15. As defect was here. here is 12 to 20 or you can say more than 15 usually, right? And it decreases further by alkalinization. In that case, it, uh, potassium normalizes. Sorry, here it, this is about potassium. In that case, potassium was normal, low, and it normalizes with alkalinization. In this case, potassium will be low, right? Because as there is acidosis, body will start excreting hydrogen and potassium ion. So it is also a hypokalemic RTA. Potassium will be low, but it decreases further by alkalinization. Question is why is that? Now assume uh, you give bicarbonate to correct the minor metabolic acidosis in type 2 RTA, right? This bicarbonate will come to kidney, will be filtered by glomerulus, right? Now the bicarbonate reabsorption is defective. So this excess of bicarbonate will be present in urine. Now this will 
by combine with the potassium which which, which now pct is a minor pathway of reabsorption of potassium the body does reabsorb potassium but it is a very minor pathway so this bicarbonate will combine with that potassium will result in further excretion of potassium as a result what will happen okay, if you alkanize a patient of type 2 or proximal renal tubular acidosis the potassium will further fall and it will result in dangerous hypokalemia these are the two main uh, uh, acidosis defects type 1 and type 2 there's another two one is type 3 now type 3 is rare right as such type 3 is rare it is associated with marble brain disease or marble bone disease both osteopetrosis or marble brain disease why marble brain disease because majority have intracranial calcification there's a defect in carbonic anhydrase type 2 and less than 100 cases in the world are present right so type 3 is rare marble brain disease intracranial calcification defect in carbonic anhydrase type 2 and associated with osteopetrosis now this one is important so this is type 4 renal tubular acidosis now this is aldosterone and aldosterone dependent what do i mean by that now normally what happens aldosterone will stimulate the enac epithelial sodium channels which will increase the sodium reabsorption result in potassium and bicarbonate uh, sorry potassium and hydrogen ion secretion right now this is defective aldosterone action is defective so as usual what do you expect hyponatremia hyperkalemia right so there's hyperkalemia which will be dangerous to the heart which will cause arrhythmia so it is therefore it is also called as hyperkalemic rta now this will be the mildest so in severity if we compare the type 1 distal will be the most severe followed by proximal followed by hyperkalemic rta this is the mildest right now this is most commonly seen in clinical practice overall also this is most commonly seen right most common inherited was type 1 this is most commonly seen in clinical practice it is usually drug related like aldosterone inhibitors basically spironolactone epilirinone angiotensin receptor blockers and ec inhibitors and trimethoprim now what about urine ph here again this is a minor defect wherever the if this this is a minor defect minor defect that means ki urine pH should be less than 5.5 as the DCT is functional which is which will result in correcting the acidosis what about bicarbonate more than 17 as expected and this has the best prognosis now what is the treatment treatment is to stop the drug so these are the four basic type of uh, renal tubular acidosis which which are a differential of metabolic acidosis i'll be adding the link to the description of previous acid base balance videos so kindly go and watch it uh, this is in continuation with the video on the metabolic acidosis in which one of the differentials was renal tubular acidosis thank you